August wrap up. I was gonna say July. It's no longer July. Don't mind my like ratchet fingernails. Uh, this hand's still wonderfully done, but these three fingers broke off because I went back to work this week. And um, childcare is not conducive to fake nails, so yeah, they broke off. So just ignore this hand, I'm sorry. everybody it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my August wrap up for 2021 part one I read a total of 15 books this month which I'm actually very proud of because I was in my placement for school the entire time of August except for the last two weeks so I am splitting this up into three different parts so without further ado let us get started <sighs> The first book that I read for the month of August was Off the Record by Cameron Garrett. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. It follows Josie Wright who wins a writing competition and is given the opportunity to write a profile on an up-and-coming celebrity called Marius. As she spends more time with him, she begins to fall for his charm. Then a young actress steps forward and tells her a terrible secret about a very famous director and as more and more women start to step forward after the first accusation, Josie has to decide whether or not she will tell these women's stories or keep it to herself so that she doesn't jeopardize her career before it even starts and is like the story of that. I think that this story was really great and it covers some very important topics but I do think that it is definitely very triggering for sexual assault and fat phobia so be mindful of that going into it. I enjoyed the story for the most part but I do feel that the pacing was a little off at times. It took so so long to get to the Me Too movement part of the book that I had completely forgotten that it was one of the main plot points of the book. But aside from that, I do really love these characters. I think that Josie was very relatable. I loved watching her deal with her anxiety and start to understand it more as she continued on with the two-week cycle of interviews. Both Josie and Marius are bisexual, so I really liked seeing their relationship blossom as the story progressed. I also really liked the messy sister relationship and how we got to see them grow closer as the story ended. But even by the end, they weren't like... The best of friends it was still a little messy which i think is very relatable overall i think that this is a very important read with great bisexual fat and anxiety rep so i gave it four out of five stars next up i have the taking of jake livingston by ryan douglas i gave this 3.5 out of five stars so this follows jake livingston who is a black queer teen who has the ability to talk to ghosts he begins to be haunted by a very angry teen named sawyer dune who actually killed many of his fellow students before turning the gun on himself. I thought that this was an interesting book, although I feel like the world building was a bit lacking at times. We're kind of thrown into the story and supposed to understand what is happening and why it's happening, and that was a bit confusing at times. The story is told in alternating point of views between Sawyer and Jake, which I found very interesting. The perspective from Sawyer's point of view was very chilling and creepy and I think that it definitely made the story stronger. I think that Jake is definitely a very strong character and I liked watching him grow as the story progressed. I'm also a big fan of the romance between Alistair and Jake and I definitely wish that there were more scenes with the two of them together along with their friend Fiona as well. I think that the three of them were a very nice balance for the darker parts of the story because there are definitely some dark parts in this book. Overall, it was a decent read. I enjoyed my time while reading it, so 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next up, I have Don't Hate the Player by Alexis Ned. I gave this 3.5 out of 5 stars as well. Amelia is a field hockey player starting her senior year of high school with very good grades and the perfect boyfriend. She is also the only female player in a very competitive esports team. She has always kept these two worlds very separate from each other, but then her team enters a competition where one of the rival teams has a boy from her past who recognizes her named Jake and the two worlds are merged. This was actually a really cute story about two friends who grew apart as they got older. I really liked seeing the chapters from Jake and Amelia's childhood where they bonded over arcade games. I actually really liked both of these main characters. At the beginning of the story, I will admit Amelia was not my favorite. 
of the characters but she definitely grows as the story progresses, and I definitely like her a lot more in the end of the book. I liked watching her grow and begin to actually stand up for what she believed in by the end of the story. Jake was also just a little cinnamon roll and just such a little sweetheart and I wanted to hug him so badly. The side characters were also all very unique and each had their own personality which I really liked and I loved the banter that the teams had between the other team members. I also thought that the inclusion of the chat forums for Team Unity was a lot of fun and I definitely think that it enhanced the story for me. Overall, this was a cute contemporary book that featured the gaming community which I don't see a lot of in books other than like Slay. But that wasn't like a romance, this was like a cute romance so I was here for it definitely recommend it if you're in the gaming community you'll probably really like this the next book I have is a graphic novel called Sweet Tooth, and this is by Jeff Lemire. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. So this follows Gus, who is a rare animal-human hybrid that was born after the world's population is wiped out by a virus. He is hiding out in the forest after the death of his father, who told him never to leave the woods. One day, hunters show up and are about to kill Gus when an old man named Jeppe shows up and and he claims to know of a place where people like Gus will be safe. So Gus decides to leave the woods with this man and travel to this place as like the story of that. This was only the first volume of the comics, so I did say that it was a graphic novel, but I don't think that that's accurate. I think that they're classified as comics, but it felt like it was a setup to the world more than anything, so not really that much happened. It was more getting to know these characters. I'm definitely intrigued by the comics and the characters and the world, but like I said, not much was really explained. So I am a bit confused, but I will definitely be picking up the next volume to you know, learn more about it because like I said, I am intrigued. So three out of five stars. And then the final book that I will be talking about for this part of the wrap up is The Duke, The Lady, and A Baby by Vanessa Riley. I gave this a 3.5 out of five stars. So this follows Patience Jordan who lost everything including her young son Lionel as well as her entire fortune when she starts to question her late husband's apparent suicide. With the help of the Widow's Grace, which is a secret organization that help women, she is able to escape Bedlam, which is a prison, and be hired as a wet nurse for her son Lionel in her former home. Busick is a war veteran who is determined to care for his new ward, but his amputated leg from the war makes that a little bit difficult and it's like the story of those two meeting and falling in love. I enjoyed this book for the most part, but I will say that the beginning was a little bit slow and we are kind of just dropped into this world with no explanation. There's never really any talk about what the Widow's Grace is, what Bedlam is, how Patience got there, how the people that she met there are now in this story as well. It's very vague and it almost feels like we missed a prologue or like a novella to let us understand this world. I really liked Patience. I think that she is definitely a very strong female lead. I also really liked Busick and I liked how he was a disabled main character and that was a big part of his story. Personally, I don't really think that they had a lot of chemistry romantically, but I did enjoy how supportive they were of one another and Lionel. Lionel was a huge part of the story and I think that he was a great addition because he definitely brought a lot of comic relief with his little burps and like cute little gestures that he was doing in the story. I actually listened to this on audiobook and there were two different narrators for Patience and Busick, which I think really helped with the chapter flows. But overall, I think that this was a very quick, easy read and I enjoyed it, so 3.5 out of 5 stars. Alright everybody, so those were the first five books that I read for the month of August. Once I upload parts 2 and 3, I'll leave them down below so you guys can check out the other 10 books if you're interested. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!